We worship as we live our lives in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to worship. We celebrate Easter. We celebrate, uh, this is your chance to see Easter lilies. <laughs> <laughs> so God's blessing on us as we enter into worship. Our worship will begin with a time of confession and forgiveness. Uh, during the season of Lent, which we just finished, of course, uh, in Lent we talk a lot about confessing. We think a lot about our sins, uh, but we usually save the fullness of absolution and forgiveness uh, for that Monday Thursday service. Um, so post-Easter, uh, we really want to celebrate and focus on God's word of forgiveness for us. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts through your Holy Spirit, that we may receive your forgiveness and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. God, we confess that we have done things that hurt others. We confess that we have failed to do things that we should have done. We confess that we have said hurtful words about other people. We confess that we have blamed and assumed the worst of other people in this time of coronavirus. We confess that we have been selfish in our response to quarantine, wanting supplies and activities at the expense of others. We confess that we have missed opportunities to serve others. We confess that we have withheld love and forgiveness from others and from ourselves. We confess all the other sins that we would prefer to keep secret, but that God already knows. God is rich in mercy. God is abundant in love. God loves you and forgives you even when you sin over and over again. Because Jesus died, and overcame death, Jesus overcame sin. Through the grace of God, and in the name of Jesus, all your sins are forgiven. The things that feel that they are huge and unforgivable, God forgives. The things that feel insignificant, God forgives. The things we did on purpose, God forgives. The things we did through negligence or ignorance, God forgives. God forgives you all of your sins. Through the love of Jesus, be made new. Be strengthened through the power of the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in you, guiding your actions and your words to deeper love and to greater service. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Our reading today comes from the book of Acts. Um, this is a story that happens just after Jesus has been raised from the dead um, and has been uh, visiting with the disciples in a number of ways. So the disciples meet with the resurrected Jesus. So when they had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to all the ends of the earth. When Jesus had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you keep looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. So, this is an interesting story. Uh, we get here of um, Jesus his last words before he leaves again. I guess he left before. He came back. Yeah. He leaves again, ascending into heaven. Leaves again so that he can be with us <laughs> everywhere. Everywhere, all the time, forever. Yeah. Um, and the last thing he tells them is, you will be my witnesses. You're going to tell people about this. 
And obviously they do because we've got, you know, <laughs> yeah. all these stories the church endures. Um, so Jesus calls not only the disciples to be witnesses, but Jesus calls us to be witnesses. Um, and I don't think we know how to do that. Um, and that's partly because I think we know when we talk about being a witness, we know what we don't want to be. We've seen bad examples of this um, through the history of the church, through, you know, movies and and. Um, all of this bad stuff. And so we're afraid a little bit to be witnesses because we don't want to be seen as pushy. We don't want to be seen as like overbearing, like hitting someone in the head with a Bible. We don't want to be seen as like not caring about what other people think or believe. We don't want to be seen as someone who's just like offering something empty. You know, when someone's going through hard times, be like, it's okay because Jesus, that feels empty sometimes. Um, we don't want to be seen as like brainlessly positive, like pretending like everything's fine all the time, even when the world's falling apart, pretending like the bad things aren't happening. Because um, we see Christians doing those things, and we don't want to do that. <laughs> and I think sometimes we're afraid that we don't know enough. Yeah, that absolutely. To be a witness, you've got to have all the answers. Right. You know, and, right. And that some, pe some people that witness act like they do. Yeah. And we, but we're yep. not there. But, yep. Yeah. And if you don't have the Bible memorized, like scripture, you know, line and verse and all of that, like we feel like we have to, but you don't. Yeah. <laughs> I Google a lot of things. Living proof, right? Part here. of the yeah. Bible where Jesus tells the disciples to do this. Yeah. I Google stuff like that all the time because yeah. we don't, we don't need to have it memorized. We just need to um, experience God. So, um, so let's talk a little bit about how we can witness in good and healthy ways, um, ways that reflect us. I want to start by saying that um, we don't all have to witness in the same way. I think um, for some reason one of the images that comes to me when we talk about witnessing is like people going door to door and like knocking on the door of a stranger and being like, do you know about Jesus? Like I, I could not ever do that. Like that would be like my worst nightmare. Like I would, I would hate that walking up to strangers. Obviously I talk to people about Jesus all the time. I'm very comfortable doing that. But the idea of walking up to a stranger's door and doing that is awful. <laughs> so we don't all have to, like, that's not the only way. Um, if you like to do that, cool, go for it. Yeah. But um, we'll be, we'll don't invite me. <laughs> um, but we all witness in our own ways. You know, I have other ways that I like to talk to people. Um, you want to be genuine. Yeah. You want people to sit, see that you are... You are witnessing out of your own experience, out of, out of who you are, yeah. instead of some kind of script mm -hmm. or uh, some kind of uh, masquerade of some kind. Uh, you want to, you want, you want your witnessing to come through you mm -hmm. and not something that you just throw at somebody. Right. Yeah. And I think a lot of times that's also um, happens that witnessing isn't like something you do to strangers. Mm -hmm. It's something you do to people that you know and love. You know, it's when you're having a conversation with someone about, how was your weekend? And yeah. you mention, oh, yeah, we watched worship at church online, or yeah. we, you know, did whatever service project, or just telling them about the things that you're already doing. It's having a conversation with people you love about something that's important to you. Your faith is important to you. That's why you're here. <laughs> that's why you are participating in a church community. That's why you um, engage in scripture, because it's important to you. So the same way that you want to share with people about your other hobbies and passions and uh, things that you do, you're just telling people about this is something that's important to me. Doesn't mean yeah. it has to be important to you, but you're just sharing that part of yourself. On Monday mornings, a lot of us share what happened in the football game the day, the, the day before. I do that all the time. Yeah, well, there's exceptions. <laughs> there's exceptions, but uh, it would be just hopefully it could be just as natural and yeah. just as exciting to share what happened in church the day before. Yeah. Or uh, or what you did as a family that was a faith experience together. Right. Um, we should we should be able to be hopefully move toward being that comfortable about talking about our faith. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's I think ways to witness too that don't have a lot of words. We think about um, we talked a lot about talking, um, but I think sometimes it's you know giving a hug to somebody. Which I know we can't do right now, <laughs> um, unless they already live with you. But something like that, giving a hug to somebody, um, cooking a meal for them, showing up on their doorstep with a, a casserole when they're grieving is absolutely a way of witnessing, of sharing God's love, of showing that um, through our actions. 
Um, I was talking to one of our young people the other day, and she was telling me about how um, when she's in online groups and there's a conversation and somebody will say, um, you know, okay, I'm not feeling great, I'm gonna leave, and like they leave the conversation, she will send a private message to that person and say, hey, is everything okay? You know, I'm here for you. And that to me is absolutely a witness. That's saying, I see your pain, I see you're you know, feeling uncomfortable, like, um, and I'm here for you, I love you, and I support you. Um, so our witness doesn't have to look churchy. Um, it can just look like the way we already do our life, just paying attention to um, sharing love with people, sharing God's love through the normal things that we already do. Well, it's that paying attention, I think, is the key word. Or yeah. Another aspect of that is listen. Yeah. I think a lot of our, our witness can begin not with what we say, but how we can listen, actively listen to other people, and very intentionally enter into their, their story yeah. with their permission. Um, and know that you're not someone I'm just trying to save, um, but you're someone I love. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that it begins with that. Yeah. Um, and then when someone recognizes that you really care about them, yeah. that you're listening to them, then maybe they might listen to us, you know, yeah. when we want to share something of our story. Yep. Yep. It's so. about building a connection um, and sharing God's love through that connection. Not like, it's not about correcting no. what people are doing. It's about connecting mm -hmm. uh, with people. Absolutely. So, um, and I think, we should talk a little bit too about how witnessing right now in this particular time in the world yeah. feels different. I mean, everything feels different right now. Um, but right now we as Christians have a particular witness um, to offer to the world. We have the, a word of hope. Um, we, we know that Jesus died and we know that it didn't work. <laughs> um, that death doesn't have the last word. Um, and that's something unique that we get to share with people to know that death doesn't have control and power over us even though there are people who are dying even though death is a reality and like we know that that's not the end of the story um and we get to share that again not being like you know brainlessly positive and pretending that everything's okay but walking into this pain with people and saying we know it's hard we know it hurts but we also know that jesus overcame this mm -hmm. that this isn't the end that we will get through this that we have this word of hope because of what jesus did for us uh, like it says in Romans 8, that's one verse I know, <laughs> is nothing can separate us from the love of God. Yeah. And that's really what Easter, or Good Friday and Easter are all about. Yeah. That God has come to be present at the point of our greatest need, um, but also promise that, that <clears throat> things like death or the coronavirus will not have the last word. Yeah. Life will have the last mm -hmm. word. Resurrection will have the last word. Mm -hmm. Love wins. Love wins. Amen. 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 Um, we're going to have a song. Uh, this is one we have done before um, as well. I think we did on Easter Sunday. Uh, so it's just a short um, thing. We'll sing it through twice. So it's Be Not Afraid. Be not afraid. Sing out for joy. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Be not afraid, sing out for joy, Christ is risen, alleluia. Be not afraid, sing out for joy, Christ is risen, alleluia. Be not afraid, sing out join together in prayer. Risen Christ, we lift our prayers before you now as we pray for the church and the world and all in need of your resurrection love. Risen Christ, give us bold and creative words and actions to witness to your resurrection. Help us to proclaim your love to all people who yearn to hear it. Help us to be a loving and supportive church community, even in a time when we can't be together in person. Give us creativity to proclaim love and to serve one another in new, 
bold, creative ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Risen Christ, you overcame the power of death and you rose from the dead. Raise us from death too. Raise us out of fear and anxiety. Raise us out of anger and greed. Raise us out of isolation and loneliness. Raise this world out of the pandemic into new life together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen Christ, you rose from the ground just as the plants begin to do in the spring. Bless this earth, that all plants and animals may flourish, and bless the farmers who care for this earth, that they may find joy and prosperity and safety in their work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen Christ, give hope of new life to all who live in the shadow of illness and death. Be with all who are affected by coronavirus. Be with healthcare workers who sacrifice for the sake of others. Be with all who are ill and afraid of seeking routine care. Be with all whose mental health is fragile right now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. God, we pray especially for those we love, those in our community we are not able to see, and those who are particularly vulnerable. Today we pray especially for Al, Nathaniel, Dick, Irvin, and Mary, Tim, Erica, Lonnie, Chuck, Adam, and Andrea, Riley, Shirley, Jerry, and Jack, Randy, Tom, Chris, and Kathy, Deborah, Jane, Rick, Jenny, Kyla, James, and Jake, and we pray with the family of Caitlin Griffin at her death. And we pray also for those whose names we lift before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray together the Lord's Prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Amen. who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen indeed. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.